Hey guys, um, I'm starting this again. It's going to be like the third time I've started this because it's just, I don't know, it's hard to get back in the flow, flow after it being a month. So this is episode number thir no, four of the Crocheting Stitch podcast. Um, it's been about a month since I've talked to you guys last. It's been crazy. So, um, so yeah. I will tell you all of what's been going on a little bit later. Um, but yeah been just a craziness. I've got a lot of stuff to show you, a lot of things I'm working on. I've got my show notes on the screen behind me, which is why I've got a glare in my glasses, but it's dark outside, so the screen provides a little bit extra, um, a little bit extra light, so it's okay. You don't need to see the eyeballs anyway, right? Um, but anyway, I've got a lot of stuff to show you, a lot of stuff I finished, some stuff I've bought. It's just a lot of stuff. So um, the first thing I'm going to show you is right here in front of me because I got to this point when I was recording just a second ago and just I lost control so decided to start over. Um, this is a granny square blanket for a friend of mine at work. Of course my stitches are falling out but that's okay. Um, and let me unfold it for you. It's uh, fair, it's gotten pretty big. I've done, I've gotten pretty good progress on it. I've only been working on this for you know a few days now, um, so it's, I'm gonna make it quite big even for a baby blanket because I've got plenty of yarn, um, which I'll show you um, when I go over like stuff I've bought. But it's kind of a cool, um, it's kind of a cool. Thing. She picked out two different variegated yarns. See, here's this one that's got. Um, just basically blue and purple and pink and then this one's got a little bit of orange and pink and green in it as well and then the blue and then the pink stripe so what I'm doing is I'm doing um, like I think there's one, two, three, four. I think there's there's three or four rows um, of a stripe and then I do of a, of the main color and then I do a row of variegated another row or two of the main color Oh my god, Henry. Come on. You gotta move, baby. Henry. <laughs> you gotta move, honey. <laughs> He's such a cat. He just, you know, will stand right in the way. <laughs> anyway, what I was I saying? Um, anyway, and then I'll start the same kind of sequence up here with the blue <laughs> is basically what I'm doing. So, and these are just double crochets. And this is just, um, you're going to have to just excuse his tail. He's, he's obstinate like all my other animals. Um, but yeah, so it's just a basic, basically it's a granny square that you just keep on going around. You don't, um, you don't like finish it off and then join a bunch of squares. It's just one ginormous granny square. And there's not really, um, a pattern that I'm using for this. It's just, it's just a basic granny square over and over. Now, this is the type of granny square that doesn't have holes in it. The only holes are here on the corners where um, where you increase in the corners because um, it is for a baby and I just wanted it to be a little bit more solid. A um, little bit less likely to get fingers and toes stuck in there, I guess, a little bit. But um, So yeah, so it does increase on the with the little holes here, but that's about it. So this is a solid one, a solid green square blanket. Um, the colors that I'm using, there's four <laughs> colors, um, are, I'll just tell you what they are and then I'll show you the colors in a minute because they're in my acquisitions. It's one red heart color called Bon Bon, um, two Craft Smart colors, which is a um, Michael's color um, in Fiesta and Turquoise, and a Karen one pound in Cupid pink, which is the pink, obviously. Um, so that's that, and I've, I'm, she's not due till January, but I'm gonna have that finished pretty quick, I would say, so yeah. So the next thing I'm working on, also crocheting, I've gotta get it, this is quite large, I'm not gonna be able to show you the whole thing. It's another blanket, but this is just a scrappy blanket, and this is the same kind of pattern, it is a granny square, continuous, granny square except this one is the traditional um, type that has the holes the clusters I guess is how you would say it it's it's gotten pretty pretty big 
So, see, it's got the holes. Um, and this is, it's just basically three double crochet. Um, and I, with this one, I do chain one and then three. And it's some patterns you don't chain one, but I just think it makes it look a little bit less squishy. And with this one, this is fold, folded over in fours, but you can kind of see it's really, this is, this is folded in half and it's really big. So, um, my goal is to make it like when I stand up kind of as tall as me, so it'll be a good snuggly blanket. This is going to be for me. So, and what this is, is a scrappy blanket. Um, you can tell it's just all kinds of colors and it, what it is, if you can see it, there we go. These are just my variegated scraps that I've got. Now, some of them don't look variegated like this one and this one. So, um, what I did was I, when I didn't have enough of a scrappy color, I just chose one that was similar to the variegated. Um, like you can see it, this blanket is just a hot mess. <laughs> it's so big. Um, you can kind of see it in, where was it? Right here, I guess. Um, this yellow actually kind of picks up some of the yellow in here. So that's, I mean, it's just for me, so it doesn't really matter, you know, but I am using a lot of my scraps in this one, my, all my variegated scraps, and I have a little bucket full of just variegated scraps for this one. And uh, so, yeah. And I'm using, on this one and on the, the baby blanket, I'm using like a six or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook it's just kind of my go-to for blankets. I know a lot of people use like big hooks for the blankets, um, but I like them to be a little dense. And this is all uh, worsted weight yarn. So both of them are worsted weight. So there's those. Those are my two like ginormous crochet pro projects. Um, both of them probably will not last, you know, forever because that one is almost done. And then the baby blanket goes by so fast. Um, so yeah, let's see, those are finished projects. So I don't need to show you that yet. Let me throw that over there. Um, those are my only two ongoing crochet projects. The rest of what I'm gonna show you in ongoing is gonna be knit projects. Let's see, here's my actual hook. Yeah, I'm using my Tulip um, six millimeter hook for that baby blanket. I got this for Christmas. I really like this hook. It doesn't, it's not, I mean, it doesn't make my hand feel, you know, wonderful or anything, but it does seem to make it hurt a little less than if I'm crocheting forever with a um, regular hook. So here in my, this is a, a, one of my poor girl project bags that I got from um, South, it's Southpaw Creation, but it's Aaron Gimme Yarn 418 on um, YouTube. So this was one of her Christmas ones. I just I like owls, but it's like an extra long one, which works out really good. So this that I'm going to show you is gets my yarn out here. This is my good lord. There's yarn everywhere. Um, this is the pattern that I'm working on. This is pattern number three, I think, in the Curious Handmade um, shawl society thing so I really like this one the second one I'm still working on I'm not as a big fan of um, I really like the way it looks when it's done but it's just not as been fun for me I think because the yarn is so little and I'll show it to you in a minute but this is my Vila Vila V-I-L-A wrap um, this is the second one and I'm actually like I'm 60% done with it so it, it is going to have to be blocked because this is kind of crinkly. You change color like that, like with stripes, which I've never done before in, in knitting. So that's really, that's been really cool. And I've actually enjoyed this, this part quite a bit. And then this is kind of a lacy section. It's got a really neat, it's really hard to see on here but it's got a really cool kind of you can see it a little bit kind of like a leaf pattern going on and then you go back to the stripies and then it, towards the end there's another purple section with some more stripes so that's this and I'm using my um, chai goo or chow goo however you say that 
these needles are it's the size it rec I think it's the size it recommends um, they put them on there they like stamp it on there in almost the same color that the needle is so I never can here it goes it is a US size 8 and this is a 5 millimeter and this is on like a super long cord um, it's because I didn't have another five millimeter in this these are my um i was using i feel like i'm saying um a lot i'm just not in the groove right now uh it, i've been not recorded in so long but these tips are are so much more pointy than my um knit, knitter's pride ones that i have i started out on those the knitter's pride and it was the length of the cord was better but it was not pointy enough for the, um, the like where you have to add the stitches to make it to make this um, chevrony type pattern. So I, I kept missing stitches. So I changed them over to here. But these were the only ones I had available in the right size, and it's like this super <laughs> ginormous cord. But it's okay. It's not really a problem. And these colors. This is my very first knit picks yarn. And these colors are black and then asphalt heather and then this color is eggplant and it's actually a deeper purple it's more like a I don't know more like a like a royally kind of like the LSU purple that's what this is it's not quite as it's not quite that that color on the screen so so yeah and I'll show you, um, it's in my acquisitions too, but see. I'm not sure. I did buy extra of this because I'm not sure um, if this will be enough or not. But we'll see. I do have an extra ball of each color, so I have plenty. I always like to have enough, like more than enough, as opposed to not enough. And then you'll just be waiting forever for an order to come in um, or to go somewhere and get it. So there's that one, and then I've got stuff laying everywhere. <laughs> uh, another shawl I'm working on, I use post-it notes to tell me a lot of times what row and stuff I'm on, or what, this is the chart, what chart I'm on, this is a charted pattern, um, because sometimes I don't print my patterns off, I just use my computer while I'm sitting here watching Netflix or whatnot, so um yeah, that's how I do it. Sometimes I just write it down. Okay. This I have not worked on in a little while. This may be... No, these needles are smaller. I say This may be where those U.S. size 8 needles that I needed were. But these are a size 6. These are my... Ch these are Chagas again. This, the red lace needles. I do have some of just... The ones that are just the red cord. Where the where it's bent right here. I don't like those as much. But they, they're, they're okay. Um... This pattern has a weird name. It's called the Kamora B. I'll spell it for you. K-O-M-O-R-E-B-I um, shawl. And it's by Jessica Andrews. I'm sure that Kamora B. Kamora B. I don't know. Kamora B. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I can't help it. I just, I just don't know. Um, but I will put the name in the show notes. I do have show notes, which is what I'm looking at. So you will get show notes for this episode. Um, this is my very first, like, super, like, well, no, it's my very first pattern where I have to kind of follow a chart. And, um, there is a, there is a chart chart, but this is, I don't use those. I'm using the written out line by line pattern, which for me is easier um as a new as a newbie kind of knitter uh but this is my first like super lace following that kind of setup pattern and it's turning out pretty good now i have made a couple mistakes i'm not sweating it really um i'm not i don't i don't think you can even tell like i can't hardly tell you might be able to tell on this side over here where the little triangly guys are not quite as triangly <laughs> i get you know what I'm saying? Like, you can kind of see these, this side over here, these little, they're not triangles. Whatever these are, 
they're more the like diamond shapes, I guess. They're more defined on this side than on this side. And um I really don't know why, but I'm having fun. Um this is kind of taking a side seat to um my Helen Stewart patterns, but and it's got cat hair on it, sorry. Um but I'm having fun. This is going to be for my mom for Christmas. So I do have um, several more months to, to work on it. So um, you can kind of see. I think it's, I mean, it's turning out kind of, I like it. Um, even though, I mean, it's a handmade object. Well, these aren't too bad either, this side, really. I don't know. I've have, I know I've made mistakes because my row counts have been off before. I've had to adjust. Um, and I, it, I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress about it. Um, but, <coughs> excuse me. So, yeah. So, I'm really, in, I'm, I really am enjoying this. And this is a pattern. Um, I can't remember if it's a paid for pattern or not. I did, I downloaded two of them that, to, that are very similar to this. And one of them was paid for and one of them was not. And I really can't remember if this one was the paid for one or not. Um, but my mom had seen a shawl sort of like this at a um, fair that we went to where it's kind of lacy on the top. And then when I get towards the, the bottom of this, it's kind of got a solid uh, panel at the bottom of, I'm not sure what kind of stitch. It may just be knit stitch at the bottom, but it's, it's not this lace all the way to the very end. Um, so she saw one like this and she really liked it. So I looked for a pattern that I thought she would like and it'd be similar. And, um, this is what I found. And this yarn, I don't have the ball band for it anymore. I don't think. I'm hoping that this should be enough because I have, oh, I have quite a bit left. This should be enough because I don't know what kind it is. I'm thinking... Honestly, I would almost guarantee... Ooh, my hair is a mess today. Whatever. I would almost guarantee that this yarn is um, the Loops and Threads brand, the Baby, from Michaels. Because I remember there was a... The, I had a hard time finding a white that I liked that wasn't so... Um, didn't have sparkle in it. A lot of white has sparkle. That didn't have sparkle and that wasn't so flimsy or fuzzy. This is just kind of a, um, this is a thinner yarn, but it's just kind of plain. Like, there's no, there's no huge halo. It's not sparkly. It's not fuzzy. That's what I was looking for. And I'm pretty sure this is a baby yarn. I know it's acrylic. Um, I generally work with acrylic is what I, is what I work with. It's just more user friendly um, for me. Sorry, I gotta fix the hair more user friendly for me and for the fact that the majority of the people I give things to are not really they're not knitters they're not yarn yarny people so I don't want to give them something that's going to be super complicated to take care of so so yeah I really enjoying this pattern um look it up I'm not sure if it's a paid for or not but either way I'm having a pretty easy time following it even though it's it's lacy so I would give a thumbs up to that one. Um, the next thing, and like I said, this I've not been really working on. Um, and I'm not sure if it's the pattern that I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to for sure give it some more, some more go. Um, this is uh, also a Helen Stewart pattern, part of the Shaw Society. I've gotten this yarn has been sitting here, so it's a little bit wiggly wooed around. But this is the second pattern in the Shaw Society 2 uh, group. And this is the Sprites Thin Shawl. Okay. So this is a lace weight shawl. And this is the yarn that I have. I've showed you this when it when I first got it, I showed it to you. This yarn is um I have it written down. Let me let me eyeball it over here. Okay, it's Handmade by Zan, Z-A-N, 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 Handmade, Handmade by Zan, and it's in the color Beachy, and it's a really pretty, um, blue, and it's got, it's blue, white, and with some kind of tan, like sand, 
basically. And it just all looks white. But some of these, some of these lighter colors you see are actually kind of a tan sand color. So I've gotten, I mean, I've done a few rows. This is as far as I've gotten. I really like the way the yarn is working up. Like, I think it's very pretty, um, the yarn. And I think the pattern's pretty. And I'm not really having a hard time following it. I don't know what it is. I think it's the combination of it being such such small yarn. So it's, it's lace yarn, lace weight yarn. I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. I love the yarn, though, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, because I don't hate it. I'm just, like, I don't just, I don't pick it up. Like, I do the, her other one that I'm working on, the, uh, Vila Wrap. So, and it's really pretty. I think it'll be beautiful when it's done. I just gotta get it done. One thing that kind of put me off from the beginning, I think, and that's why this is in here, if you, you can see this, is a little stitch markery thing. Um, it's actually just not a stitch marker. It's a safety pin, but... This was a um, eye cord cast on. I did not like it. It was very fiddly. And I think that kind of started me out on a, the wrong note with it, maybe. Because um, it did take me several tries to get it. And it was super duper fiddly. So maybe that kind of got went. So. Oh, these are the other. These are also Chai Goos. And these are. As you can see, I think I have a, I think I like chow goo needles. I do have, um, I got some more needles for this because I thought maybe the needles were a problem as well. These are a U.S. size 4, 3.5 millimeter, and they have this bend. They are not the lace, they are just the reds. And I did get another set of needles. I don't know what I did with them, though. They are around here somewhere. I didn't lose them. They are, um... I got a set of Addy lace needles to see if maybe they weren't quite pointy in it. I don't know. I got a, I don't know. So, yeah. I am going to, I'm going to pick this up and work on it again. Because I really do think it will be really beautiful when it's done. I'm just, for some reason, I'm just not feeling it. I don't know why. I love her patterns. I like the way they're written. I love the chart, like the step-by-step -step page. I love it. But, I don't know. I'm going to push my little screen up because we're on finished things now and these are all finished although I don't think because you know it happens I have not woven in the ends on any of these next few items so you will see the ends but it's okay y'all understand right so I've, I've just been trying to kind of work through some of my scraps um, so I've just been doing some hats. These are just, this is just a scrappy green hat. This is the Better Late Than Never beanie. And what I, all I did was, um, I just used some of the, my green scraps and, um, I just made the beanie. It has not been washed yet, so it's a little bit stiff, but I just thought it was cool. This, um, it, it, it's got a lot of different colors of green in it. It's just a scrappy hat, so... I don't know. I just love this hat pattern. I just love. I can just pick it up and do it without looking at anything. So, um, yeah. And I made several more Better Late Than Never beanies in different colors. These are, again, just scraps. The black. See all my ends? I should have been more professional and done all my ends before I showed them to you. <laughs> it's okay, though. Um, the black is not necessarily scraps, but if it's a, like a really good, um, hint or tip and trick for these is if you do have a lot of scraps, but you're, you're not so much wanting to do where all the colors are just different, use one of your neutral colors, like, or, you know, a contrasting color like black or white or cream, and then you can do the smaller stripes in your scraps, so you don't have to worry about not having enough as you know as much and this is just a hot pink and black and this is more of a um women's or teen size hat it would not fit my big head this one would but this one <laughs> it would not and then i made a matching um scarf to go with it and all this is is just stripes so it's just double crochet um, 
the black is double crochet and then the pink I believe is half double it's just so you know so you kind of match um, I have not decided if I'm gonna be doing the Christmas shop this year um, here you know that's that I did last year the little crafts fair but if I do that's what these are kind of for because a lot of people really liked the matching sets so that's the, the idea behind these next couple of um, sets here this one again with the you know this is also the better late ne than never beanie but it's got black yarn on it but this version is got the um i think you call it a camel stitch let me see if i can bring it closer you kind of see how they're it's like a ridge let me bend it you see the ridges kind of these stick out quite a bit um, and but this is also reversible so you could do this side where there's no ridges if you didn't like this look um, but this is purple and then a, just a cream an off-white color that I had sitting around um, the only thing this is I guess it's called a can't like a, did I start say that already a camel stitch I think is what um, Margaret calls it I'm not sure if that's like the official name but um, anyway She's the sheepishly, Margaret, sheepishly sharing. Everybody knows her. But um, the only thing about this stitch, it's, I guess it's just the nature of it. The join is very apparent in this one. Um, it's not nearly as apparent in the normal as it is in this stitch. But if you wanted to, you could use this side and it's not quite as apparent um but it's on the back of your head i mean really does anybody care other than me i don't think so but um so this one i do have a matching scarf and i didn't do i did a little bit of the camel stitching on this one not much um just to keep it from being too crazy but these are just normal double crochet and half double crochet crochet um, lines and then to these are camel stitches right here just to add a little bit of border going on so those go together look super cute and then the last set of these I have let me put that over there these all have to be washed especially this one whatever yarn this was this variegated yarn is super duper um, scratchy so but it's an acrylic so when I wash it it'll be it'll be soft again but this is just a cream and pink now this is a variegated pink and this is like a just like a creamy like a mauve color I guess so it doesn't match exactly but it goes really well together you down here I've got them striped and they just they go really well together and then I made a scarf that goes with it and I think that the scarf turned out really good I like I like those together it's not exactly your first you know like I don't know I didn't think about putting these together at first but I do really like the way they look kind of like you know this part is is kind of super mild and then it's like BAM with this crazy color and then it's like super mild and BAM with the crazy color um I am the person who, if I'm going to paint my nails, paints them a crazy color. So I do like crazy colors, but I also know that not everybody likes crazy colors. So kind of, you know, temper it a little bit. The, um, let me see if I can grab these because they're down here. Hold on. The last couple of things I have, or a few things I have that I've made, these are made on the Addy. So I did bust out my Addy, my small one. Um, so the Addy Express or Professional, it's the little, the little smaller one. And I made some scarves. This is my little, I gotta um, trim that in then. But this is my little Ninja Turtle guy. It's my first, my first uh, attempt at him. He turned out pretty good. He's got little safety eyes in here. It's hard to see. It's hard to see in person too. But I wanted him to have little eyes. So he's got little safety eyes. And this is just acrylic yarn, uh, most likely Red Heart. It's just some scraps I had. Um, and then I made another, this is my second Ninja Turtle one. This one turned out much cuter. So I did this 
stripey thing at the top. So this is like the part that goes like this. Just so it wouldn't be black all the way. But you didn't, do you notice what it did? <laughs> I wanted them, to, I meant for it to be even. Like, they are even. Like the same, but I meant for it to be in the same order. But you got red. Then, uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> yeah, I messed up the order here. So I just went with it. I, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it happened. Um, but once I noticed it, it had already happened. So I was like, you know what? It's okay. Um, it'll look like it did it on purpose. So then I made these little circle guys. I can't hold both of them up at once. There we go. Um, these little circle turtles. <laughs> this is just a crochet circle. Um, I think this was double crochet. And I just did like two or three rounds through my circle. Just like you would a hat. But um, just made them big enough that they were going to go on here. So I did that. And then I did... Um, I crocheted a band of, you know, the turtle color, orange, purple, blue, and, and red. And then I attached them, made white circles for the eyes, and these are buttons. They're not safety eyes, they're buttons. Um, and then on this end are the other two, blue and red. I think it turned out really cute. I like this one a lot better than I like the first attempt. I think this is this is cute. And um, it's just this is just a black tube. It's like 260 rows, I think, is what I did for these. So yeah, I think that's super cute. Um, and then my next thing, actually, if we're being honest, this was my first one that I, first thing I made when I whipped the Addy back out. Um, I saw on the face group Addy Loomers and Knits. This pattern came up, or somebody made some of these. And this is, Margaret has made these before. And she actually has, if you Google, go to Google and, and, and Google Sheepishly Sharing, and it will come up. And the pattern is on her website. And she actually gives you the count, the number of rows for this color, for the white, up here. She gives you the, all the instructions. The only thing I did different, really was um I did a different kind of mustache. I made little crocheted loops for his mustache um and then I put it on the same kind of loops on the hat brim and for his beard. And I just think it just adds a different kind of texture. You can see it it's pokes out a little bit. And then these are safety eyes on him. The only thing about the safety eyes that I might be concerned about is the fact that if you do try you can poke through here you see you see it right here and it is a little pokey but we take these um i'm trying to think. if i decide to go to the craft fair with these i'm going to get a nail file and just file these down flat so that they're not um pokey on the end is what i think i'm gonna do and then he's got a little pom-pom like his hat this basically is you know this part is supposed to be his hat so here's incarnation number one of him and then him, here is incarnation number two this is more of like the pattern says so this is kind of what the pattern looks like without the extra kind of embellishments so and you can tell see how much bigger his face is on this one than this one this is the same yarn for his face as down here, but somehow I got more rows. But this yarn, this is Karen Simply Soft, so it's very, very, like, drapey. And this is Red Heart, so look how stiff that is. So this one will have to be washed. The only, so the only thing I'm worried about in washing it is the pom-pom, which is already attached. So I think the safety eyes will be fine. And this guy is, uh, these little strings, they're attached really well. So they should be fine. But I may just put it on, um, put it in a lingerie bag and do it on gentle. Just to soften it up a little bit. Um, everything from here down is soft. But this, this yarn is not very soft. It's kind of scratchy. <coughs> Excuse me. And those are all to like roughly 260 rows, I believe. But, like I said, go to, um... 
sheepishly sharing that website and it tells you to go under Addy tutorials and sh it'll have like a picture of you don't have to watch the whole video there's a picture and it breaks down exactly how many rows that she used to do hers so it's a really good reference to use dogs barking outside I think my neighbors are having a party so if my dogs start having a conniption fit then that's why <laughs> um so I guess we'll go to acquisitions next and I did do a nitpicks order um they were having the nitpicks brava worst brava sport on sale um a sale on it and I got two of each one of the colors it takes for my um for my shawl oh no wait I forgot one I almost forgot one the cutest one so I made a puppy look at his tail oh my god look at his tail so I made a puppy with his little his little ears so basically the construction of this is just a tube a beige tube I need to um trim that up a little bit but it's just a beige tube and then I did a circle just like the hat circle um, except when I you can see he's a little his his snout is a little poofed out what I did was I just kind of cinched it when I sewed it I cinched it into um, snout shape and then this is another black crochet circle and then I just kind of embroidered this or however you whatever you say and then these are just two black circles so it was pretty easy and these are just crocheted ears I just kind of freehanded the ears but I think he's super cute I really really love the tail so oh. and it I might trim it up a little bit but I kind of like it, it like shaggy and, and weird so basically what I did with this to make this weird tail is I held two strands of yarn together and I crocheted a um like an oblong I sorry I thought there was something at the door I crocheted kind of like I was doing a circle but okay wait here we go I crocheted a chain and then I crocheted back across the chain and then underneath so it was like I crocheted all around kind of like if you're doing a pot holder but I only did that like once and it was basically just to give me something to attach these floofies to and then I just attached them like you would ten tassels or fringe and I just kept attaching and kept attaching until I just got his poofy little tail <laughs> I just love it I don't know like I really just I think it's just cute Whoa. he gave me his little puppy face hold on his little puppy face ah, okay anyway I was just playing around with it he turned out really cute now that was my last finished thing so like I said before I got super distracted I didn't order um, on knit picks they were having a sale and I needed sport yarn for that pattern the Vila shawl so I got um, so I picked this kind so the colors that I used for that I I told you I'd, I'd show you this is eggplant like I said it is not that color purple let's see no it is really more like a uh, LSU purple than this purple I think um, uh, this might be a little bit more of the purple it's a very deep royal purple and then this color which is asphalt heather oh well actually this is cobblestone heather this might be a different color than the one, first one um let's see hold on just a second because it might totally be well no it's the same color I must have just wrote down the wrong color when I was yeah it's the same it's cobblestone heather not asphalt heather I think asphalt heather's darker um so cobblestone heather and black and this yarn is really soft I do I really like this yarn and then because you can't just you can't just order three <clears throat> or six <laughs> whatever um actually I ordered three these three first um that I and I started the shawl and I said this is never going to be enough so I ordered this the three more colors um then I ordered this color this is called fairy tail it's like a plum not a plum it's like a bergen I don't know what color this is it's very pretty it's like a purpley it's kind of 
it's the like the lighter cousin of this one. Um, and I was going to use this as my contrast color, but I decided on this one. And then I ordered, <laughs> then I ordered this color because I was going to use this as my contrast color. But I still decided on purple. This is Tide Pool, which is a really pretty teal. It's coming across more blue in there, but it's really like, it's kind of like this color. You see it better. It looks less, less bluey back there. Um, it's kind of, it's a teal. It's got a lot of green in it. And then this one, this one is beautiful. I love this. This is like a mauve color, I think. Purpley mauve. I love purples. Can you tell that anything in the purple family I'm like all about? <laughs> um, this one is called Seraphim. I just love this color. I'm not sure what I'm going to make. I do know that the next pattern to come out, it's already out. I'm, I think it's, yeah, I've already downloaded it. The next pattern for the Helen Stewart, like number four, is sport weight as well, I think. Or maybe you can use sport weight. I don't know. But I could use, I think it calls for two colors maybe, three colors. I'm not sure. I may use some of this because I just, I don't know. I love these, I love these colors. Or if I need a different color, it could always just be another haul on Knit Picks. These are like $1.99. And they were on sale for like $1.20 or even a dollar. They were, every color was a different price, which was weird. Like, can't you just make all your colors the same price? <laughs> so, there's my bag of that. This did not all come together. It was not one order, like I said, so... I don't know if that makes me feel slightly better that I didn't order it all at one time. So then I went to Walmart, like you do. A couple last couple times I've been to Walmart, they have not had this yarn, this Mandala yarn. But they got some in, so I snapped up two in the rainbow, and I did make sure. Well, that looks kind of. <laughs> I did make sure that I got two that were that were rolled as similarly as I could find um, because I do want to make something together with these two. I'm just not sure what. You do get, a, there's over 1,100 yards, right? Yeah, there's 1,100 and something yards with these two together. So it's quite a bit of yardage. So I want to make something because I really like this rainbow. I just don't know what I'm going to make. So these are kind of on the back burner. Just just to look at and be beautiful. This color is called Gnome. I'm not really sure why. Gnome. I do like this better than the Karen Cakes. I like this, the, the thinness of it. I like that it's... So this is, a, I think, better for knitting. I like the... The, the thickness of this for knitting and how much you get for the price. Karen Cakes are nice. They're really soft, but you don't get a whole lot. Um, and there's a lot of this in here. And it is also machine washable, which is so much better for me. So, um, this is a number three light is what it's called, is what they say it's, it is. So, yeah, Mandali Yarn in Gnome. And I did pick up two more and I think I showed you these last time so I didn't bring them over here with me in unicorn um that was several weeks ago so I don't know if I showed you or not I can't remember just can't remember and then I did you know of course I just showed you or I told you the colors for that baby blanket I bought those all at um Michael's had a coupon all their yarn was on sale for like 20 percent off or something like that so this is the red heart in bonbon print which is a weird color for or a weird name for this one i think let me lean down and get it um and then the other contrasting color is in craft is this craft smart which i'm pretty sure is a michael's brand as well and this is um what color is this fiesta just kind of a more wild color. And then the blue is also the Craft Smart in turquoise. And then the pink is this Karen One Pound, and it's One Pound Baby. So I haven't seen this one before, 
but it's carrying one pound baby. It's really not any soft. It feel, I mean, it's soft, but all of the carrying one pounds are fairly soft. Oh, um, pink, Cupid pink, Cupid pink. This is the name of this color. And it was in Michael's in their summer if you, section. If you didn't know, um, they have some, I guess, summer yarn over in their, my, well, my Michael's does, in their summer section. Like, where their clearance stuff is, they have these bins that have their, some of their summer yarns in them. So, yeah. So, that's all the knitting and crochet yarny related stuff that I have. Um, I went to Gatlinburg last weekend. I had this turtle. This is not at all crochet or knit related, but look at this. This is a change purse and it's a turtle. It's so cute. Look, you put your, you see that? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I just love it. I don't think I'll use it as a change purse, but I'll just sit him on my little, on my desk. <laughs> He's so cute. He's got little feet and everything. Okay. <laughs> That's about that. Um, so I have made another purchase, several purchases. <laughs> I bought this. This is the 100 Acts of Sewing Skirt 1. And if you have um, been anywhere, you've seen seen this. I don't know how to sew on a sewing machine yet. I've got, I'm going to learn. And this is going to be something that I want to make. Um, Yarn Hoarder, it's her podcast name. Um, she has made <coughs> a bunch of these skirts in really cute prints. And I just, I really want to make them. I think I would wear these, these skirts. They're just really simple. Um, and I've started to, I'm not, I'm not to the skirt making point yet. Um, but I have started to kind of gather stuff I need. This is elastic for the skirt. So there's that. So that's all I've really gathered for the skirt so far. I'm not to, I'm not to the skirt making point yet. So I just picked it up as I had some PayPal money that I wanted to use up. So, um, in that vein, I got a sewing machine. Um, it's not even out of the box. It's still in the box. Don't mind this price tag. I got this off of Craigslist and I paid like $20 for it. Still in the box. It is like totally still in the box. She never even opened, like she opened it, but she didn't ever use it. So, I'm super excited about that. I'm going to learn how to sew. Um, Mom, oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking to you while I'm leaning over. I was grabbing a bag of stuff. My mom knows how to sew um, pretty, really well on her sewing machine. She, I'm going to take that sewing machine over to her house, and she's going to teach me how to thread it and get started and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I went to Joann's to get some fabric. While I was there, I got some more safety eyes. That's just random, but it did. Um, and I got a bag of random fabric pieces because they were having, um, I don't know what they call them. I just call them their scraps. I think they call them remnants. Um, all of their remnants were on sale for like 45 or some percent off. So I went and got me several different pieces so that I had something to kind of practice on and get used to stitching. So I'll show you those. They're just, they're just remnants. Um, I got this, I got a couple of different, I'm not really sure. Some of these don't have what they are written on them, but I did get, oh, this is just cotton, 100% cotton. Um, I did get a couple different kinds of fabrics that I could feel so that I could see kind of what the difference when I'm sewing with them. So I got that. Um, I got this. It's really, it's just like a gingham-y look. And I don't even know what this is called. Um, it's just, it's cotton again. It's got a slightly different feel. I just picked up some cute, some cute ones that I thought would be good for me to kind of um, learn on. A lot of what I picked up was cotton because it was the cheapest um, for me to learn on. They're just little bundles, and they're different. They're not, most of them are, are way less than a yard. Um, all of them are less than a yard, I think. And it's just, 
I just thought it'd be good for me to learn. They're different thicknesses and such, so, but I think, I must like cotton, because I think everything I picked out was cotton. Oh, this is not, this is some kind of, well, it's, it says cotton on the thing, but this is more like a, this has more of a felty feel to it. And then, this I'm not going to practice on. This is um, almost a yard of fabric, and this is French Bulldogs. Do you see this? Oh my gosh. See the Frenchies? Frenchies with sunglasses. Oh my lord. Oh my gosh. Frenchies with just regular glasses. Things upside down. Oh, so cute. I don't even know. This is almost, it's almost a whole yard. And um, it actually says boxers. Those are not boxers. Those are Frenchies. So anyway, I don't know what I'm, this I'm saving till I can sew and make like maybe a little baggie or something for me. Or I don't, a pillow. I don't know. But it's so cute. Oh my gosh. I got some more buttons. I got some some of these buttons. These are cute. They're flowers. Um, and the, just a couple different sizes of safety eyes. So that's that's pretty much my Joann's haul. Um, like I said, I haven't really started anything with the sewing stuff yet. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that when I get into that. It's a black hole of another craft. Like I needed that. Um, so there's that. So that kind of leads into things that are upcoming. I want to learn how to sew a sewing machine, of course. Um, and then I want to learn how to make that skirt. So that's going to be like a long-term type goal. Um, my other type of thing I want to do, I want to finish some of these projects that I've got on my needles. I mean, I seriously have, let me scroll back up and see. I have one, two, three, four, five, I have like seven things going. I'm on, on needles or hooks or however you want to say it. Like seven things. That's too many things, I think, to me. And so I need to finish. And um, when I finish, I want to start on the next Helen Stewart pattern because I am behind. I did finish. The only one I have finished is, is shawl number one. And I've shown you that. And it turned out pretty good. I'm probably going to make another one of those at some point because I think mine turned out smaller than it should have. Um... But yeah, so I want to finish some stuff so I can cast on some more stuff. Um, because I only have um, so many needles, you know, so that kind of keeps me from casting on everything. I could always just go buy some more needles, couldn't I? <laughs> it's not a good idea. I have fluff all over me. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I'm going to be doing next. Um, recommendations. What do I have? What do I've been? I've been watching on Netflix the show called Van Helsing, and it's um, it's what you'd expect from something called Van Helsing, but kind of different. Uh, it's apparently a sci-fi original program, which does mean that if you ever watch anything on sci-fi, you'll recognize about thirty-five percent of the characters because they just recycle their actors into different programs. Um, it has the girl in it from Warehouse Thirteen, I believe. If you've seen that, she's a vampire. So, it's pretty good. It is not at all for children. It's too gory for children. So, don't watch it with little with little ones. Um, it's not scary. Because I watch it. I watch it at night. And it's not something that, that scares me. I'm the person who can't watch The Walking Dead at night. Like, I would, I, when I used to watch it, I would have to pre-record it and then watch it the next day. <laughs> so, there's that. And what's next? What's next? Uh, I would, I've been watching um, Brooklyn Knit Folk on YouTube. So her podcast is really good. I'm sure that y'all have already, y'all know about her. But if not, then go check her out because she's awesome. Um, I've watched all her back episodes now. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the Yarn Hoarder podcast. She's the, um, the one who's got me interested in starting to sew. So, watch her. She's got a bunch of episodes. So, there's a bunch of back ones to watch if you like to binge watch like I do. Um, so, yeah. So, what I'm going to do, because I know that YouTube won't let me update or won't let me upload more than an hour at one time for some reason. Like, my videos can't be longer than an hour. I don't know why it's got that on me. I'm going to stop the video right here and make a part two of kind of what's been going on in my life. So, um, if you are not interested in that, then you don't have to watch that second part. So, 
that's good. So anyway, I really thank all you guys for staying and watching the video with me. Well, not watching it with me. Watching me make the video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can just, um, you know, ask me down in the comment section. Uh, we do have a... Um, Ravelry group. It's just uh, crocheting stitch and um, just search that in the, in the box um, You can find me on Ravelry Instagram and Facebook as crocheting stitch. Uh, I am most active on Instagram. I post a lot of pictures on Instagram um, What else you can find me also as crocheting stitch on my Etsy shop although it has not been updated in a while there are still quite, you know, there's still stuff in there. I just haven't got a chance to get around and updating and taking pictures. Life's been busy. But, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you next time. Bye from my little friend. <laughs> and, um, I do have some videos from our trip to Gatlinburg and from where I went to the tractor pool a couple weeks ago. So, I will probably be posting those, um, in the other video. And say hi, Lola. Say hi, Lola. Okay. Bye, guys.